Hello everyone. Uh, so today uh, let us look into the application part of the balance bond theory. So we will look into how to apply the balance bond theory in order to uh, uh, come across the shape of the acetylene molecule. So from your uh, school level you know what is acetylene. Acetylene is nothing but its IUPAC name is ethyne. So ethyne as, it, uh, as the name says it's a alkyne. It's composed of multiple bonds. So this is the basic structure of the uh, ethyne molecule. So here if you uh, look for the central atom uh, basically it contains two central atoms both are carbon atom and since the nature of bonding on these two carbon atoms are the same so just we need to consider one of the central atom and look at the type of bonding or the way the bonding happens then automatically you will be able to find out the shape of the uh, whole molecule. So we'll start with looking at the ground state electronic configuration of carbon atom. So if you look at the ground state electronic configuration of the carbon atom, the ground state electronic configuration is 1s2, 2s2, 2p2. Uh, this is because uh, the atomic number of the carbon is 6. Now the bonding, in bonding we only consider the uh, valence shell so therefore, uh, we, I have represented in box notation only the valence shell. So uh, 2s contain two or uh, two electrons and 2p contains two half filled uh, p orbitals with the single electrons. Okay, and one of the orbital is empty. So if I look at the central atom, okay. Uh, I see that this particular carbon atom is bonded to two atoms. One is hydrogen and another is carbon atom. So it requires only two orbitals, atomic orbitals with unpaired electron for forming the bonds with the two atoms. Okay. So if you look at the ground state electronic configuration of carbon atom, you find that uh, the there is available two orbitals with single electrons. So if I take these pure p orbital and try to form bond with uh, one hydrogen and one carbon, let me look at the shape of what it forms. So if this is my carbon atom, this is center of the carbon atom and these are the p orbitals. Okay, I have drawn the two p orbitals. Okay. As, we, as you know, they have three p, p orbitals, uh, 2px, 2py, 2pz. Uh, so all the three orbitals are at mutually perpendicular uh, directions. So in the plane, you have two uh, p orbitals at mutually perpendicular directions. So uh, one of the p orbital is kind of bonding with the hydrogen and one of the p orbital is bonding with the other p orbital of the carbon atom. So this is the way it looks. Now if you look, expand it in the form of a bond, the shape looks like something like a, a kind of what you say angular shape or uh, it could be considered as a square sh uh, shape with one of the side being removed. Okay, So this is a wrong shape Okay, because we know from the lewis Todd structure and the VSCPR theory that the structure of acetylene molecule is linear. Okay, so how to account for the linear uh, shape of the acetylene uh, molecule? So here we have to bring in the concept of hybridization. Now hybridization is nothing but it's the mixing up of the atomic orbital in order to form equivalent orbitals having uh, a, a, a directional shape uh, which helps in explaining the shape of uh, the orbitals across the central atom. For example, here we require, in this case, we require two um, orbitals for forming bonds with the two atoms that is hydrogen and carbon. So 
uh, we will do a hybridization that is mixing of the orbital. But before we mix the orbital, it is essential since we are mixing s and p orbital, it is essential that one of the electron should be unpaired here and excited to the empty orbital on the 2p. So when we do that, this is the excited state of the carbon in which we have single electrons on all the orbitals of the valence ship. Now the next job is uh, we have the hybridize. Since we are forming two bonds, one with the hydrogen and one with the carbon, this carbon atom is forming two bonds, so it requires two unpaired electrons. So uh, in order to get two unpaired electrons, we have to mix one s and one p orbital. So we get two hybrid orbital which is sp hybrid orbital. Why it is called sp? Because here we are mixing 1s and 1p orbitals. That's why sp. Number of sp hybrid orbital that is formed is 2 because we are mixing 2 atomic orbitals. So how many atomic orbitals you are mixing? That many number of hybrid orbitals you are going to form. So you uh, here generate 2 hybrid orbital and 2 of the orbital, 2p orbitals remain as pure orbital. Now, let's look at the shape of the uh, sp hybrid orbital. So here we are mixing one s orbital and one p orbital. Uh, when we mix them or hybridize them, we get two sp hybrid orbital. It looks something like this, one a larger lobe and one is a smaller lobe. The shape of the hybrid orbital looks like this. So when we combine the two, uh, we only draw the larger orbital, we usually don't draw the smaller orbital and these orbitals are pointing at 180 degree to each other. Again the principle is to minimize the repulsion, the orbitals will take a position which is at maximum distance from each other. So that is why when there are two hybrid orbitals present, in the case of sp hybrid, it will be oriented in, the, uh, in a linear fashion. So each of the carbon atom is now containing a um, two sp hybrid orbital. So this carbon also contains two sp hybrid orbital and each of the sp hybrid orbital as you can see is singly occupied. Okay, So each hybrid orbital is containing one electron and that kind of pair up with the other electron of the hydrogen here and it also pair up with the other hybrid orbital of the other carbon atom. So this pairing leads to the formation of the covalent bond. So when you see this uh, hybrid orbital and how it overlaps with each other, you see that the shape that is generated here is like if you connect them using bonds here, it looks like a linear shape. So we see that this uh, valence bond theory has clearly explained the linear shape of the acetylene molecule. Now one advantage uh, that you see here of the valence bond theory is that it explains what is the nature of the multiple bonds here in this case. Usually if you remember when we do the BSEPR theory, we usually do not take into consideration the multiple bonds. We usually consider this as a single domain and that is why at each carbon you, are, you have two electron domains so therefore linear shape is coming. Okay? We are not giving primary importance to the multiple bond when we are looking into the BSEPR uh, theory. So that is another drawback of the BSEPR theory that here we are not taking into consideration the uh, uh, the multiple bonds but VBT theory as you can see below we are trying to explain the multiple bond formation as well because once the hybrid hybridization has happened and sigma bonds are formed these uh, direct or linear overlaps are called sigma bonds once the sigma bonds are formed okay we have two pure p orbitals at mutually perpendicular angles. So this particular p orbital is on the plane. So that is like this. And this particular p orbital is kind of uh, 
perpendicular to the plane. So this is another p orbital. Now these p orbitals which are at the same uh, parallel to each other on each carbon atom can overlap sideways, can overlap sideways. So uh, this or orbital also can overlap sideways. Okay, And this sideways overlap that is happening between the uh, pure p orbitals on the carbon atom is what is giving you the multiple bonds. So in acetylene, if you look at the structure here, the acetylene Uh, sorry, uh, sorry for the interruption. Let me get back to the place. Okay, so if you look at the acetylene here, the acetylene structure is nothing but uh, like this. Okay, so acetylene contains two pi bonds, okay, two pi bonds and one sigma bond. So that two pi bonds is coming because there is side, two sideways overlaps that is happening between two p orbitals and that is giving the multiple bonds in the acetylene molecule. So that is the advantage of the VBT that VBT is now able to explain clearly in terms of atomic, atomic orbital how the uh, pi bond or the multiple bond is forming uh, in these compounds. So I hope uh, you got to know the importance of the VBT and how it is applied to find out the structure of the acetylene molecule. In the next video, we will be talking about uh, another uh, molecule where uh, we are using the VBT in order to account for the shape of that particular molecule. Till then, have a nice day.